What a great strike by Tonga by Lowen. Pressure coming. Intercepted in the end zone. Hey, Dolphins, my name is Kimberly Bell, a.k.a. Kimmy B, and you're watching Dolphins Today, coming to you from Baptist Health Studios here in Miami Gardens. Now, Coach Mike McDaniel has kept busy lately due to hiring his first set of assistants as an NFL head coach, though such an experience may be new for Coach McDaniel. He'll have plenty of support and veteran leadership on his first coaching staff. Fun fact, it actually includes more than 300 years of coaching experience. You did not mishear me. I said 300 years of coaching experience with 183 of those years coming at the NFL level. Now, a dozen of the team's coaches are returning, which as fans, you know, we love to hear to the Finns in the same or similar role. Three of McDaniel's additions are former Dolphins players, one being Wes Welker. Also, we added Sam Madison and Patrick Sertan. They are two of my all-time favorite Dolphins, I gotta say, all of whom played together on the 2004 Dolphins team. Now, the trio will become the 12th 13th and 14th former Dolphins players to also coach for the team. Miami's coaching staff actually got a chance to do some media availability on Wednesday of this week. So of course we wanted to share some of the best sound from that session. Check it out. So excited um, today for you guys to meet the, the entire coaching staff. I feel extremely proud and, uh, and blessed to have these men working with me. And I think when you have perspective and experience uh, with good guy, guys who communicate well, uh, we're gonna build something that is obviously tailored to our players that's gonna hopefully bring out what they do well. I'm extremely excited for the staff that we've put together on defense, the staff that we've put together as a whole group to be able to uh, play good complimentary football to put a good product out there on Sunday. Being home, playing for the, the, the franchise that gave me the opportunity and, and seeing what his team you know, is, is our, on the cusp our, of, our it was an easy it, decision. It I'm really just excited to be, be back down here and, and um, you know, ready to get to work and, and do whatever we need to do to, uh, you know, make us a contender. To be able to come back, you know, to where you played, where you did some really good things, to be able to give the knowledge, uh, you know, back to our 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 players, it, it feels really good. All right, Dolphins, next up, we're going to welcome our very own Travis Wingfield onto the show for the latest installment of Finn's Focus. Now, this week's edition will focus on the team's cornerbacks position group. Thank you for joining us, Travis. Hey, thank you for joining us. I noticed you use Dolphins. That's like my go-to phrase, so I appreciate you kind of embracing the the, the culture here. Trav, where do you think I got it from? From me. I'm a pro. Me. You know what I'm saying? Let's <laughs> get into it. Now, the Dolphins led the league with 91 passes defended last season. How much do you credit the cornerbacks for limiting offenses through the air? I think you got to give a bunch of credit, especially Xavier Howard and Byron Jones, who are two of the very best lockdown corners in the entire game, and they do it all. They mix it up with press, mirror, bump and run, mm -hmm. man coverage, zone coverage. It just doesn't matter with them. Now they're coached by the best cornerback tandem in franchise history with Sam Madison and Pat Sertan. I can't wait. Me either. I was so excited when I heard that those fellows were coming back to the Dolphins. Definitely going to be a big year. Now, Madison was also asked about Howard specifically and how he wants him to continue to solidify himself as a leader on the defensive side of the ball. Three of the top corners <laughs> that ever played together, you know, and, and one of them, you know, could take over the other. Hopefully he does because he's a really good player, but he's a good player. He's a good guy. I, we've communicated even when I wasn't here, even when I was just, you know, doing television and even when I left, I still communicated with him because I wanted to be good. He's here with our organization and I always has been pulling for him and I'm definitely going to be pulling for him now to, to be even more elite and he understands the expectation that we're going to put on him um, and he's up for the challenge and I've just heard he's a really good teammate so looking forward to working with him and getting getting him to take another jump if you can possibly. What, what, are, what, are, what, are, what are those expectations? Expectations you got to be X you got to be dominant you we need you and we're going to follow his lead I mean Pat and I we always took that lead even though you know we, we sat there, we competed against each other. We still need X to be X. 
So, Travis, Xavier Howard made his second straight Pro Bowl appearance in 2021. Now, how would you describe his value to the Dolphins secondary? Paramount, a catalyst maybe, as what they do on this defense is really kind of ran by those two cornerbacks on the outside and how well they play in that press coverage. And they, they run multiple pressure looks based upon how Xavier Howard and Byron Jones and really the entire in secondary's ability to kind of match up and play that tight man coverage. You'll see X and Byron travel with receiver number one on the opposite side of the ball. Both those guys, Howard and Jones, a big part of what this defense does. Definitely looking impressive. Now, in 2021, Miami's defense allowed its lowest passer rating since the 2013 season. I mean, who's not excited about that right now? What was most key in such an improvement? I think a good mixture of coverage and rush, and that's what Josh Boyer, Dolphins defensive coordinator, always goes back to, the combination of that rush and coverage pairing together. And he had a great feel for when to call those particular looks and blitzes and different games up front. And also, Nick Needham's emergence on the inside was a big part for this defense, plus his flexibility to play multiple roles. He played in the high post as well, too. So he and Justin Coleman had so many plays in the football this year also. It's a deep, deep group who's got talent after talent after talent. And the best way to drop opposing passer ratings is to take the football away. And few teams are better than this group at doing just that. I know, I know. Now, last question for you, Travis. What are you most looking forward to seeing from the team's cornerbacks in the upcoming 2022 season? I'm going to borrow another boyerism here and just talk about <laughs> building upon what they did last year, refining those things they did well, but also work on the areas they want to improve. I'm not sure what those are. I'm sure they have them for themselves and their own goals they want to set. I'm sure they'll do a good job of taking care of that this offseason, but I'll be curious to see how they can get creative with not just those two corners, but also the young safeties and Javon Holland and Brandon Jones in the back end, both those guys having two years under their belt now of experience their communication is only going to get better from there. Real quick, I want to take it back to the conversation we were having earlier about having, you know, Sam Madison and Pat Sertan working with this incredible group of talented guys. If anybody's going to be able to get the max out of them, I think it's definitely those two. Without question. Iron sharpens iron, right? Facts. No, thank you so much for joining us, Travis. Thanks for coming in. It's, um, thanks for joining us. This is your first time in. <laughs> it is. I feel quite at home already, as <laughs> good, you can tell. Good, good, good. Next up, Dolphins, let's discuss some community work. This is one of my favorite things that the Dolphins do. Now, last season, Dolphins players of the Social Impact Committee and staffs teamed up with Palm Beach schools to configure Wi-Fi extenders for district students. Now, the team recently got a chance to do the same thing in Bell Glade, where they distributed Wi-Fi devices at Gladeview Elementary School to provide 150 students with internet access and technological support. Now, the Social Impact Committee will also be making a 300000 thousand dollar commitment to further bridge education equity and to assist with wireless technology for underserved students that attend public schools in Broward, Miami-Dade and Palm Beach counties. We are so lucky to have such a community commitment from this team. Now job well done to all the Dolphins involved with this initiative. All right, so before we let you go, Dolphins, we wanted to end today's show with some highlights. Now, with the Dolphins welcoming a pair of DBs to the staff, uh, we thought we'd take a look at some of the best interceptions by Dolphins cornerbacks last season. Check them out. And whoa, did he hang on? Take it away! Ridley had it. Howard does now. Able to get rid of it. It's picked off. Intercepted. Nick Needham into the end zone. End zone picked off. This game is over. Justin Coleman. And what a night by this Dolphin defense. They won the game. All right, so unfortunately, that's a wrap for Dolphins today. I'm feeling rather comfy in this chair, of course, sitting here at Baptist Health Studios. But the good news is we'll see you on Tuesday. Go Fins. Bye, y'all.